So some people say it's all about speed. Fast cars, fast trains, fast planes. Now there's something else that is on the top of the speed at the moment. And that company is Tate Communications. And next to me is Gary Dyack. The challenge of today is actually my flight to London. I hope we're not getting too late because we're in the traffic jam. Actually, like every morning on this piece of road. So, yes, yes, this, so this is, my wife says, this is not a traffic jam. This is definitely a traffic jam. It's not every day. It's not every day? No, it's not every day. Okay. You're exaggerating. That's a discussion between man and... No, that's a discussion between passenger and driver. <laughs> When I look outside, whoa, it's kind of foggy outside. At Schiphol Airport, it's even more foggier. So the question is, will the flight leave Amsterdam Schiphol Airport? The flight has been delayed for more than two hours. So yes, I will be late at my destination. I hope they don't mind. Um, and we'll see what happens. We'll need to kill the time a little bit at the airport for about two hours. for the visit to the UK is a meeting with Tate Communications. It's a partner meeting. It's the partner meeting for 2017 for the EMEA. It's going to take place in Duxford. This is the UK and this is London Stansted Airport. Right, let's hit the road. I think we're here at the right place. Maybe not at the right time, to be honest. As I said, the part of conference is, is the EMEA part of conference of Tate Communications. Um, the company had a partner conference already in Germany. That has already been done. Uh, this is the second one for the EMEA customers. Thank you very much. Trying to find Jamie. Yeah. He's not here. Let's find Jamie. Not in here? No. no? <laughs> he is a busy guy, is he? Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's sneak peek inside. now provide communication to an additional 300 users on top of the 10,000 users who have actually access to the network today. So we got the CEO, the global CTO, the global channel manager, the marketing manager, the MBA. So we got a lot of important people from Tate Communications here at the event. It's a partner event. There are about 40 partners of Tate, maybe a little bit more. We're doing some demonstrations outside. And we're having some demonstrations inside. Tomorrow we're going to take a look at the new headquarters of Tate Communications here in the EMEA. So some people say it's all about speed. 
fast cars, fast trains, fast planes. Now, there's something else that is on the top of the speed at the moment, and that company is State Communications. And next to me is Gary Dyack. Gary, Hello. welcome. Good. Hello, good. good to talk to you. Good to talk to you too. Your company is exploding, is it? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, we've, um, we, we stepped back two years ago and had a good look at the company, and we've um, done a, a whole new strategy around investing in the future, and that strategy means one foot firmly planted in the traditional PMR and traditional radio business and looking for growth over that over the next 10 years, and the other foot firmly planted into the unified critical comms world where we're doing a lot of integrated software development on top of radio, narrow band integrating with wide band and um, that with that has come a change in personnel I've got a new management team um, six of the eight people now have, have only been with the business for less than two years and we're working very very hard around rebuilding the Tate brand and doing it with our dealers and reinvesting in traditional Tate values inside the dealer network on a global basis and it's showing dividends well you're also investing in property because you have a new property in New Zealand, yes, which is have. fantastic, yep. which looks very yep. nice. Yep. Now, also here in the EMEA, you got a new head office. We have got a new head office. We've outgrown our, our, our small office that we had here, and with the ongoing investment in sort of both the UK and the wider EMEA, our staff numbers are growing, and we are re-establishing our base here close to our partners and dealer network in, in Cambridge. But not only your staff is growing, your turnover is growing. You had the best year ever last, well, in, yeah. the, in the EMEA, in the last EMEA. year. In was quarter four. I believe quarter one is even better on order intake. Quarter, on order intake, quarter one has broken all the records. And for Tate as a company, last year was our best year in the last four years. So yeah, we're feeling a little bit of, um, uh, of, of heat of investment in our own way. Yep. So the only way is up? The only way is up, but we are, again, we've got to be uh, really careful on how we do that and measured performance in traditional markets as well as growing new markets is really important for us. I think it's symbolic that we're sitting by this um, wonderful piece of technology from the late 90s, early 2000s, the Concorde, it was, everyone loved it. London to uh, New York in three hours and 30 minutes and it satisfied this huge desire for supersonic travel, but it's not here today. And why? Well, it didn't have enough money put into it, it had a crash, it was too expensive and it didn't work. So we're very carefully have these things in the back of our minds as we monitor where the money's going in this ever-changing technological, technological world. We were at Mobile World Congress last week, 120 odd thousand people in a quite hyped up mode, um, chasing consumer driven models about massive amounts of data in the hands of consumers and that's where the world wants to go. But it's not where we can't get caught up in that hype. Um, and you know, in our world, we want data, m much more data being used, but it's a merge of narrow band and wide band data sources so that those first responders have a simple, clear, non ambiguous message and they don't have to put their eyes down. They can look at perpetrators, they can do what they need to do in a simple environment. And we've got to be really careful with the hype of the consumer driven technological development doesn't contaminate the simplicity that's required for good um, public safety and utilities management. We can say that Tate will stay with their feet on the ground? Absolutely, even though we're standing beside something that would take you higher in the atmosphere than you ever had in your past. That's Andy Gill. And Andy is Managing Director of Tate Communications in the Middle East and Africa. Europe, Middle East and Africa. Europe, Middle East and Africa. Pardon me. Which that's the region, that specific region, had a great turnover in Q4 last year. Yep. It had a great order intake in Q1 this year yes. already. You just joined, so that means that you have to keep up with things. Yep, we have every expectation that uh, that's what we're going to keep doing. Um, I have. I've been. Uh, I've been very lucky to, uh, to to start at a time when uh, we're on a really positive upward curve with uh, a couple of uh, significant projects in, in sort of new technology new technology areas. Uh, you know, Gridlink is is proving to be you know uh, causing quite a buzz in in that sort of utility world. Uh, and as you'd expect from someone like Tate, it's it's following those uh, smaller niches and doing a really good job of them. And we just need to do more and more of them. Tate Communications has hired Ross Pearman about a year ago in the company as this new CTO and 
The funny thing is that Ross is here with me. Ross, <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, Ross, you entered the company one year ago. We're all familiar with narrowband technology. The whole industry is moving towards a broadband technology type of thing, whatever that may be, because that's for everybody different. How's that for Tate Communications? Well, the funny thing is, for me, I'm not familiar with narrowband technology. <laughs> I've spent the last five years as CTO for a, a major uh, mobile vendor towards a tier one operator in the US. So I've been rolling out 3G and 4G networks. So it was actually quite a change to get into the narrowband world. The reason that I was brought into Tate is because we need to make that change. Tate's been working in the narrowband world. It's quite a clear swim lane where the company has operated for many years. But everything's encroaching on that now, right? We have LTE coming in from one side. We have IoT, um, a lot of data technology coming in from another, which means a whole lot of uh, new competitors, plus a whole range of opportunities and what we can do with the company. So my job was basically to come in and help lead the company into these new areas. And did that happen over the last year? We've made huge progress in the last year, yes. Um, if, we, if we have a look at the portfolio, now we have actual devices that operate over LTE. We have LTE embedded in some of our devices. We've developed um, convergence technologies to help seamless roaming between LTE and private radio networks. We have uh, trials running in the US right now on some of these technologies and we have patents that we've filed in the last year uh, in this space. That worked out very well then? So far so good. Okay, so next. Next, uh, we really need to double down. Um, we're in the very, very early phases of rolling out some of these products. We've got a few pieces here and there, and, and they are doing well so far. But it's early days, right? You know, some of these investments take some time to kick in. So now what we need to see is a little bit more connective tissue to be built between some of our offerings to make a more cohesive whole. That's what we're working on at the moment. Uh -huh. Plus, we're also looking at what do we really want to be in LTE itself in several years from now. It's easy to play around the edges, but do we actually want to get deeper into um, actual deployment of LTE technology? Yeah. And with the investments you just talked about, you, I heard you are investing uh, in people in India, is that correct? That's true. Um, traditionally, all of the development has been done in Christchurch in New Zealand, but in this new era, so much is happening in other places around the world. You know, obviously the valley in the US is a huge um, focus area for development, an incredible ecosystem of developers. In India, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of engineers are available for hire to build whatever you want to. And this is not cheap labor I'm talking about, it's extremely skilled people that have done the sort of projects that you want to do ten times already. So there's a huge labor pool there. So yes, we've now established a base in India so that we can grow and uh, let's say flex on demand as projects come in. We just had a small reception drink here at the areas where all the planes are being installed and it's kind of impressive to be honest. Um, maybe just as impressive as the changes that are going on with Tate Communications. Mm -hmm.